Football has produced many a flamboyant Brazilian, but perhaps none are more loved than Arthur Antunes Coimbra, better known as Zico. Humble upbringings on the outskirts of Rio nurtured a drive that would make him a star. My father was a great tailor, and his example showed me that once you've chosen your career path, you have to put everything into it. You have to try your best whilst following the rules of the game. And because of this, I've always been someone who's very disciplined and very determined. It took real belief for the young Zico to achieve his dream. A successful trial at hometown club Flamengo followed various rejections for being too frail to make it. They knew that I could play good football, but they thought I was too thin, too small to take a gamble on. So it was decided that I'd need to do some strengthening work to build up my muscles and to bulk up. And that's what I did. Flamengo's faith would be rewarded. Zico led the Rio club to new heights. I had difficulty cementing my place in the first team. I would go back and forth from the youth squad. But after I played as a number 10 with Flamengo, I didn't look back and will build my career at the club. In a short space of time, we managed to win more titles for Flamengo than the club had won in its entire history. Brazilian football felt like it was on a roll. And at the 1982 FIFA World Cup in Spain, hope was strong for the Seleção, who hadn't won the tournament in 12 years. Expectations were high because we'd been doing well, playing some great football. We did really well in the qualifiers, as well as in the friendlies against our rivals. Zico had his own personal pressure, wearing the number 10 shirt. The number 10 has always come with great responsibility, especially because we've had the greatest of all time in Pelé. But after a while, I managed to establish myself in the role with my own style, and the supporters had to accept that. The people did more than accept it, they embraced it. Three goals in the opening phase of the World Cup quickly established Flamengo's leading man as Brazil's orchestrator. The fulcrum of a side that captured the world's imagination with their brilliant football. I'm not one to make comparisons or to compare generations. But that entire generation that I played with, especially the side in 82, was a group of players who had all achieved individual success. We didn't manage to achieve great results as a group, but people thanked us for the football that we played, and that was really nice. It was a team that left its mark, despite not winning a World Cup. It's something we've seen with other teams as well, like Holland in 74 and Hungary in 54. Very good teams that never had the success of winning a title. For Zico, that World Cup success remained elusive. I played three World Cups, with 82 being the most important. But there we had that unfortunate day when we were beaten by Italy. So in terms of numbers, I can say that I played three World Cups and only lost one game, the one against Italy. I didn't even manage to get to a final. In 1994, Zico brought the curtain down on a glittering career that saw 48 goals for Brazil, 509 for Flamengo. Since then, he's enjoyed spells in management and started life as a television commentator. It's fun. I've been doing it for four or five years. It's a new way to broadcast football, so I really enjoy doing it. We're able to work inside the stadiums, which is much better than watching from a studio. 
trabalhar dentro dos estados. É totalmente diferente. Agora tem que ficar é, no estúdio ali. Você vê o futebol de uma maneira diferente. Você vê o futebol de outra maneira. E você pode passar essa perspectiva do jogo para os fãs. Uma outra leitura da partida. For Brazil, the road to redemption after a disastrous 2014 World Cup continues. And Zico is keeping a close eye on the current squad as they continue that recovery in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers. They have good players, they have a good team, but it needs to go back to a Brazilian way of playing football. We've seen what happened in past World Cups, where we've played a more European style. It's ended in disappointment. So they can play in Europe, but they mustn't forget what Brazilian football is all about.